Hi, I'm Karen from Traverse City, enjoying the beer fest on a beautiful day with my friends from Canada. Pleasure to be here, it's and, awesome. Good and day. we love IPA. Joined now by Scott Graham of the Michigan Brewers Guild. Who ordered the weather today? This is amazing, Scott. Well, if you brought it, then I'm really thankful, Dave, but uh, it's great to see you. And yeah, we're here at the, at the Spring Beer Festival. This is the first time we've had the event, third time we tried. Um, so we got jinxed by COVID a couple of years, so we're really happy to finally be having the event. This is um, a new event for the Michigan Brewers Guild. It's now our, our fifth in the annual series of festivals. So it, it, it's not too often that we put together a new festival. We have limited capacity. The breweries have limited capacity for how many they can do. So it's, it's really pretty cool to be rounding out our geographical footprint here in Traverse City, sort of, you know, a, a northern lower Michigan location um, is added to our event in the UP. We've got Ypsilanti, Detroit, and then just north of Grand Rapids. So, yeah, you're never too far from a great beer festival. Well, I know, and our, our people watching know how difficult it's been to do anything in Michigan over the last couple of years, anywhere in our country with COVID. But things are coming back, and uh, and and beer though during this whole time, beer didn't go away. People love beer. Why do you think the fascination with brewing in our state has grown so dramatically? Well, I, I think historically beer's been one of those beverages that is really social and brings people together and they have a good time with it. Um, and, and so they get attached to their favorite beer brand, their favorite memory drinking beer or location that they have beer where they meet their friends. And our, our beer festivals are like that too. People have great memories um, and, but that, Beer really creates community. So the community of breweries and brewers are pretty close in Michigan, but the whole community of folks that drink beer are such a nice group of people. Um, they're really a joy to be around. So we're, we're here at Turtle Creek Stadium in Traverse City, where as you can probably see or will see uh, throughout this report, is where we play baseball in Traverse City. And this is the home of the Pitts Fitters. Did I get that right? Yeah, that's right. And we've had a long uh, history of partnering with the West Michigan Whitecaps at our Winter Beer Festival. And a few years ago, the same group bought this ballpark transformed it, changed it into the pit spitters. So we're, it, it's really great to be working with them and have their infrastructure and their support. And we kind of put the, the event on together, really. Scott Graham joining us from the Michigan Brewers Guild here on a beautiful day in Traverse City. And Scott, as he said, uh, these events are going to be all over the state. And you, you hit the nail right in the head. Um, I'm walking in today, and I expect to see people wearing their favorite, you know, baseball and football jerseys. Maybe, maybe you know, a Matt Stafford jersey or something. There's a guy with a Bell's Brewery jersey on. <laughs> I feel like I'm walking into a sporting event. And you are right about the enthusiasm that consumers have for the brands that have been established here in Michigan. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of passion for uh, your favorite beer. And the nice thing is people like to try a lot of different beers and have, I think they have their loyalty spread across um, quite a few different breweries. And that's part of the fun of it. We've got hundreds of beers here today, more than any one person can try. And our festivals are a great place to not, it, not only if you have some experience and are familiar with local breweries, because you might be able to get some beer from a brewery that geographically you can't get to, haven't been to in a while, but our, our events are really fun for somebody who maybe um, doesn't drink beer that often, doesn't, doesn't think they like beer, but they're thinking of yellow fizzy beer, and there's so much more than that that there are just so many beers you can try that it, it's really fun whether you've got a lot of experience or got a little experience drinking beer. Well, yeah, and there, are, you know, I think of sours. I wasn't really familiar with sours too much until I went into an establishment at Royal Oak that that's what they feature, yeah. right? Um, but there's sours, there's all kinds of other fruit related products. Um, I'm sure some of your brewers make wines as well. It's really kind of a mixed bag of, of a real variety of products these local breweries are putting out. Yeah, to be sure. They're they're in the hospitality business and they want to please their guests. Our, our festivals were licensed just to serve, beer. buy and sell beer and they're all about beer which is what our tr nonprofit trade association is about. So w we are 
beer focused here. Um, but yeah, when you go to your local brewery or stopping at a brewery, if you're passing by, they, they quite often have other products available. So Scott, I've been in media my whole life. This is my most recent project. I'm really a radio guy, obviously yeah. not a TV guy. But I've worked in the radio in Detroit and Grand Rapids and Petoskey and Traverse City and all over the state. I'm, I'm going to do something I haven't done in my over 40 years of Are you ready? My over 40 years of broadcasting. <laughs> I'm about to ask my guest to, to sample some beer here. What do you got? Do you want to tell us what it is? And can you do a little uh, in interview taste test? Well, I can. I, I can't tell you what it is because we were getting ready for this and somebody walked by and said, Hey, do you want me to get you a beer so you have it for the interview? Interview, and he handed me this beer, which I said, of course. I don't want to put you on the spot if you don't want to drink a little bit of well, it. Well, no, I definitely do. All right, I'll, all right. I'll, I'll, I'll let's, let's see. Let's see. What I think. All right, let's see what we got. And, you know, it's kind of the fun of, of yeah, coming. You know, it, beer's such a, it's got so many sensory characteristics that it hits on. You know, you like to look at your beer and see if, if is it clear, is it a little cloudy? You know, what is the color like? What's the carbonation like? Are there bubbles there? What's the foam like? Of course, you smell it. It smells great from right here. I mean, it's it's got its own very distinctive aroma. It's good. It's, a, it's bitter and hoppy. I think it's an IPA, and it's, it's really got a little bit of sweetness to balance it out. It's delicious. I'm sure it's making you thirsty. Then. You I, haven't even gotten the beer I, yet today. Not until my report has been completely uh, fine. I remain uh, a professional. Uh, uh, we'll probably have a sip here or there. <laughs> so this event is just pure fun. Bravo, can great, great job. The Brewers Guild pulling all these brewers together. Together, you mentioned you're a nonprofit, yeah. um, but there's enough of a buzz going on in Michigan to keep you busy, isn't there? Oh yeah, we're we've got a, a, a really busy year from our events to our our member services take up a lot of time. Different promotional things. We have an annual conference in January that that we share technical information and and operations information. And then, of course, we try and pay attention to what's happening policy-wise in Lansing. We're a heavily regulated industry, and so we need to, to be aware and have a seat at the table in those conversations. So I'm having some product at a local establishment after work with my crew. You know, I'm the senior member. They're all in their, you know, 30s for the most part. And they're looking at the board, you know, the board you see at all the breweries, right? They're looking at the board, all the different beers. And I'm not really, I just, this was when I was new to it. And they're looking at the numbers. And then I noticed they're all ordering beers with the bigger numbers. And I finally <laughs> caught on. Tell people about that. Well, it, it could mean that the, that the beer is more bitter. It could mean that it's got more alcohol. <laughs> Okay. Uh, so usually a higher number is, is one of those two things, or both. Like an IPA is going to be a little higher in alcohol, and uh, a little, maybe a lot higher in bitterness. But it's measured by um, an IBU or International Bitterness Unit number, or and then there's a alcohol percent by volume number. So I, I drank one of those like sevens, and then I heard a guy on the radio, my friend Vic McCarty on the radio, on the way in here, talking about there being a beer here that had a 10% alcohol. I mean, you gotta, you got to watch your step when you're an old guy drinking 10% beer. You do. You need to think about it. Yeah. And, and I like, uh, I, I mean, I, I like all different kinds of beers, but I like to drink lower alcohol beers too because I like to have a couple, right? And you, you, you have to know how to shift gears if you're drinking a higher alcohol beer or, you know, it could, uh, it could sneak up on you. Are the breweries, any of the, the breweries and members of your guild here in Michigan making uh, no alcohol product or low yeah, alcohol product? as a product? matter of fact, one of them is here with their N.A. beer. Uh, Rochester Mills Production Brewery in Auburn Hills uh, makes a Two Roots brand, and they have uh, several varieties, and it, it's craft beer that's uh, de-alkalized. So they make the beer, de-alkalize it, and uh, you can try that if you want. It's really good. It's really All good. Right. Yeah. Well, listen, you know that we've talked about it, and... and it was great. You were so nice and welcoming when I got here. But Scott and I talked a little bit about how much fun beer is, and we definitely, in my mind, want to want to get him as deeply involved. I told my guys, we are going to get very involved in beer. They really they liked that when we yeah. mentioned that. So we're going to be hanging around, and we look forward to it. Yeah, let's find ways to work together. I'm excited about your project, and it's always great to see you. Thanks for taking the time out to come and visit. Thank you. Before we go, any tips for people watching for your upcoming events or anything? 
any final words people should know as they're coming into the yeah. summer? I would tip you off on a couple of things. If you like going to the beer festivals, you can join the Brewers Guild as an enthusiast member, as an individual, and you get uh, access to any festival one hour before general admission, which is a nice time. It, it's a quieter time. You can talk to the breweries, get to your favorite brewery, and have a little bit um, more intimate or personal experience. And the other thing is, uh, we started collecting stories up from our members to compile a sort of little history of the Brewers Guild a few years ago. And we, um, a, friend, a good friend of mine, Fred Biltman, collected a series of interviews. We compiled it into a book. And then we said, hey, we've got all this great material from these interviews. And we started sharing them via podcast. So if you're, these stories are really great. Um, if you're interested in beer or just business, um, they're fun stories. And I encourage anybody to check them out at Michigan's Great Beer State Podcast. You can find it on our website or wherever you get your podcast. And your web address again. MIBeer.com. MIBeer.com. All right. We're going to take a little break. We'll be back. We're here in Traverse City. Scott Graham, thank you very much. From Cheers, the Michigan Dave. Brewers Guild. I'm Dave Scott. Back in a moment with more beer. Beer.